midnight and we've just finished wiring it back up. Now, everything's back on. I've had a clean up of the cabinet and tidy up. There's all the new labeled cables. And the only thing not on there at the moment is the chuck switch and the up and over door switch because obviously I've not got any of the chuck guard or anything fitted at the moment. This is gonna be the first test, genuinely. All right, well. We've got a fan going. Now all the emergency stops should be in. What do you think, dog? Now you have to excuse the cables here. They're not gonna to touch anything. The motor's obviously working because the brake has come on. Now the oil pump isn't working. So, spindle off, coolant pump off, e-stop out. That just beat, so I'm guessing that that's going to turn on. He says. It made a noise, but I can't see anything. Maybe we got a brightness control. There we go. Right, so that's turning on. Right, this e-stop is out. And this is our enable button. So this should fire up the fan down there. Right. Aha, right, let's kill that sec. That was the lube pump because it's still empty. So I'm gonna fill that up and I'll bring you back. But that's looking good. Right, so we just filled her up with oil now. So hopefully we won't get that screaming alarm. Not that we're going to be running it just yet. Back on. He stops out. Turning on. He stop out. Enable. Right. Our pilot light comes on. Now, if what we want to do is, ah, you see, it's already that's already lubing up. Now, I can probably ah. oh, there's the button. Give it a bit of a press for a little while because I want to get oil, lube, all around the system. See this one, the pressure drops straight away. I don't know if that's what it's meant to do or, or not, but we'll see. But right, we don't need that light on. But I didn't know that worked, so that's good. Because that wasn't wired in before. That oil fan is not on. But we do have power. We do have the oil pump. 
I think that's the right way. To be fair, there's only a very tiny bit of oil in this at the moment. So I'm not too worried about that as yet. But there's our screen. So if I go to setup, max RPM, 100, enter. Now in theory, I only used this a couple of times when I got it. If we hit the forward reverse down here, Nothing there. So in that case, we need to uh -huh, mode DRO. Ah, uh -huh, we're moving. God, that feels nice compared to before, right? So we're moving there. About on the Z. Moving on the Z. Now we've got our jog wheel. That working. And you notice he's not binding up either. And it feels like, yep, we've got oil on that screw. And it looks like we've got oil coming out of here. So I'm thinking we're good. So now we're in that mode. Let me just grab a towel and wipe my oily hands off the lens. Now we've got that going. Will the spindle run? Because I need to do spindle speed 500 set. Just check nothing's going to catch. Now spindle forward. No spindle forward. And no spindle reverse. Right, so we haven't got spindle forward and we haven't got spindle reverse. But the brake has released. So right, we're halfway there. So I've either wired something wrong or in the, at the switch or I've wired it wrong in the cabinet. So I'm gonna turn it off, power it down, have a little look and I'll bring you back when I worked out the problem, let you know what it was. you saw that I couldn't get the spindle running. I thought it would be a quick fix. It took me a little bit longer to dig through the wiring diagrams and find out what it was that went wrong. And realistically, um, it was a bit of, bit of my fault, bit of how it was wired before. Uh, two reasons, one, because I rewired the apron and everything in the apron as per the diagrams in the book. But where someone had used a different switch with different contacts and a different arrangement, they'd rewired a couple of things on the uh, terminal blocks in here which meant when I rewired the apron properly it didn't match up so the cabinet is now back together and it's all out of clean and that is looking miles better terminal blocks in there with the new connectors I showed you earlier I've just finished up put everything else in obviously I still haven't put the cables here because there's enclosure and stuff that's got to go back on There's our pilot light, emergency stop and enable button. And also what I've had to do was, let me show you it running now. I've had to, if we go forward now, nothing happens. Now what there should be on the back of this switch is there should be 
a 24 volt live and a 24 volt latching, but the contactor hasn't got the right contacts, normally open, normally closed, to do it as per the book. So if you run the spindle at any speed and at any part of a program or just manually, say in DRO mode, and you had the emergency stop cut in, or you had a power cut, when the power come back on, or when you turn, when you reset the emergency stop and you press the neighbor again, as soon as it powers up, the spindle will restart. Obviously very dangerous, can't be doing with that. So what I've had to do for the minute is for the latching side of it, or the non-latching side, shall I say, forward and reverse, I've just put a momentary push switch in there and set it up so this works one time only as per the original switch but I don't have to do it again so it will stop it'll go reverse it'll go forward but let's say we needed to hit the emergency stop then we reset it Then we press the enable button again. Now we're back on there previously. That would now restart and you might be somewhere near it and get your arm or head taken off. So now it's rewired. We're still in forward. That doesn't work until this is pushed again. So it gives you a chance to turn it off or turn it on. And it's not going to accidentally start up on you. So yeah, there it is. She is working. It's um, it's now 6.30 in the morning. Uh, it's midnight when I've done the last little clip. So we spent another six and a half hours doing a bit more wiring, sorting a few more things out. And yeah, currently it's good to go. What I need to do is go through the backlash procedures and adjust the gibs on the saddle. I've done the gibs on the X-axis and that seems good. On the saddle, not sure if it's normal, I need to check another lathe. That between running it forwards and backwards, you get, when you run it backwards, you get an initial lift. Or as you look forward, you get a bit of a lift. But the procedure in the book, if you tighten these gibs up too much, now whether it's a combination of that motor being old and stalling, but if you tighten the gibs too much, the motor will stall. Now the procedure in the manual says what to do is snug them up, don't do them too tight, put an indicator on the saddle and then try and lift it. And as long as it's under a thou, 0 0.025, then that's fine and do the same for the back. Now, this has still got that thou and a half of lift but I'm guessing once it's cutting in one direction, um, whether that'll be okay. So I might have to do some test cuts, but you can't lift it as per the manual says. So it's well within. They say, uh, as long as you can't lift it more than a foul, and I can't lift it more than half a foul, less than half a foul to be fair. So by their book, that's good, but I'm not too sure. So I'm gonna look into that a bit more, but yeah. I'll do you another walk around. I have inquired about another one of these plates because the plate itself is bent. If you look at the hand wheel, you'll see the Z-axis one is on the wonk. But everything is working. All good. So yeah, we've got to put some enclosure on. First off, we'll check the saddle to make sure everything there is good and we get full travel. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna take this back off, loosen this motor and put this at an angle because them cables, if you go right to this far end, touch on this bracket. Now, it's not gonna do too much damage, but I'm pretty sure if I remember rightly, this was actually at about 45. So the cables were coming out of there and that's probably for that reason to clear that. So I'll have to change that. Um, we may have a couple of weeks from this oiler system here. 
not too sure yet, I'll have to let it play out and see how it goes. But yeah, predominantly, it's pretty good to go. So yeah, there's that update. And uh, cheers for watching. Come back for the next episode.